Hey, Sequoia here. So today I'll show you how I paint with alcohol inks on watercolor paper, and I'll demonstrate it with these two paintings. So for materials, you'll need watercolor paper. I'm using Fabriano 300 grams cold press watercolor paper. Um, and you could probably use different ones. I think if it's a bit thicker, it would be a bit better. You'll need a hair dryer, uh, some 99% isopropyl alcohol, brass ink by Jacquard, and two inks. So I'm using a blue and purple, also by Jacquard. You'll also need a respirator mask and some gloves. I'm wearing nitrile gloves. And you'll need a clean waterproof surface, so probably just a bin bag taped to the table would work best. To get started with this painting, add a big puddle of isopropyl alcohol to the bottom corner of the page. Then immediately add a drop of ink and metallic, and start moving it with your hairdryer. On watercolour paper, the ink will get absorbed very quickly and it can't be reactivated or wiped clean once it's absorbed. So as soon as you add ink, you should start moving it around with a hairdryer. You can move it kind of at random. I like to push it to the edge of the puddle of isopropyl and then back in towards the centre, as you can see here. But I just follow your intuition with this. There's a few things to be aware of when using inks on watercolour paper. Because it's a poor substrate, ink can sink through to the back of the page, like you see here. Likewise, if there's any ink on your bin bag, it could be reactivated and soaked through to the front of your painting. That's why you need to use a clean surface when you're painting on watercolour paper. Another thing I'll demonstrate is you can't reactivate or move the ink once it's been absorbed into the paper. So each mark is basically permanent. You can see the ink here is a bit lighter, but that's as good as you'll get. I'll show you one more time. So, I'm adding isopropyl on top of an ink mark here, but even though I move the isopropyl with a hairdryer, the ink doesn't move. So just keep that in mind when you're painting, that you can add more ink on top, but you can't really erase it or move it once you've placed it onto the page. So to continue this painting, start to include your second colour. I'm doing purple closer to the bottom and then adding a drop of blue too. I noticed my isopropyl alcohol had started to soak into the page, uh, so I added some more. You can keep doing this as you paint to make sure that your inks move around. And as you can see here, it is possible to blend the colours on the page. Also, I just wanted to let you know that I am increasing the speed of the video as we get further into the tutorial, um, so I am moving slower in real life. On watercolour paper, the inks don't leave the cleanest, most distinct lines, especially compared to Yupo paper. So that's why I always use metallics on watercolour paper. It helps to give clear, thin lines, and that adds structure to your painting. The metallics don't get absorbed into the page in the same way as the alcohol ink, so you can always wipe off the metallic with the tissue paper. And unlike on Yupo paper, the inks will stay in place even as you wipe off the metallic. So for this first painting, I'm trying to keep purple in the bottom left and blue in the top right, and then blend them together in the middle of the page. I recommend starting off with less ink and then adding more in layers as you go. You can see here I'm starting to go back over some sections to make them darker and to make the two colours feel more balanced on the page. If you live in a place with high humidity like me, sometimes your inks won't dry quickly enough on non-porous paper like Yupo. So that's why I first tried painting on watercolour paper. The isopropyl alcohol and ink are absorbed into the page and even if they're not fully dry you can continue painting and you don't have to worry about reactivating the inks. It also helps reduce some of the unappealing effects caused by high humidity. Obviously there are some disadvantages to using watercolour paper, because you can't rework your paintings in the same way, and some effects aren't really possible to do. But it's also got its own unique effects, and I definitely recommend trying it out, especially if you already own some watercolour paper, or live in a place with high humidity. That's why I chose to include two different paintings in this tutorial. I wanted to give you a few examples of how you can use watercolour paper. 
I hope this inspires you to give it a try and if you do tag me in the photo because I would love to see it and I'll share it in my Instagram story too. For the second technique, add isopropyl from one side of the page to the other, covering a large area. Then add a line of your metallic, make sure to shake it first, and then add a line of ink on top of that metallic. If the isopropyl alcohol is getting absorbed into the page, add some more to get the inks moving. Then push it around with the hairdryer. You want to push it back and forth so that the metallic moves to the edges where it will form a shiny line. Feel free to tilt the page and use gravity to help you as well. I decided to include this technique to show that you can get similar effects as on Yupo paper. This is the same composition and technique as my video on how to use gold alcohol ink. So you can watch that if you want to try this on Yupo paper. As you work your way up the page, add more ink so that it becomes gradually more saturated. You basically continue this method as you move up the page. Uh, feel free to rotate the paper as you work. One of the advantages of using this paper is that you can add watercolour paint on top of your alcohol ink painting. This allows you to add details, make areas darker, and even totally change the look of the painting. In the description I've linked to some different pieces so that you can see some more examples of how I've used watercolour paper. Start to slowly add your second colour. I ended up adding pink too, which wasn't on my materials list, because I hadn't planned to include it. Um, so I guess it just goes to show that you should always keep an open mind as you paint and respond to how the inks act on the page. In this case, I think I actually went too dark too quickly, so you can see me try to fix that by trying to wipe off some of the brass with a tissue and then redoing certain sections. The gold was sort of going everywhere and not looking too clear or crisp or defined the way I like it. So um, basically by wiping it off I was able to redo that and then get slightly more defined metallic lines. I really hope this video was helpful for you. I'd love to know what you think of this method, if you want to try it or already have. And if you have any questions at all just let me know in the comments.